It's a great pleasure and a privilege to be bringing such exceptional works to auction, particularly things that have been tucked away in much-loved private collections for such an extraordinarily long time. These four panels are the earliest works in our sale, painted between about 1416 and 1420. They would have originally formed the left wing of a high altar for a monastery church in Hildesheim. While the identity of this anonymous artist has yet to be discovered, these panels are so closely connected to their place of inception that we are here calling this master the master of the Hildesheim Magdalene legend. What is so exciting about these panels is that they have survived in remarkable condition, which allows for a fuller appreciation of this artist's distinct style, his vibrant palette, and overall elegance of his brush. This exceptional portrait of Lady de Grey by the great Anglo-American portrait artist John Singer Sargent is an absolute masterpiece. Lady de Grey was one of the it girls of, of, of her era, really. She was a great friend of Sargent's, and I think the intimacy of that relationship really shows in the portrait itself. And the character that you get coming through and the sense of emotion is just spectacular. So this painting has actually never been offered for auction before. In fact, it's never been on the market at all. It descends directly through the family of the sitter and is pretty much untouched from the day it was painted. Another important highlight of our sale is this magnificent panel by Liberale da Verona, painted in 1460 in Siena. This panel would have once formed the front part of a marriage chest. It's called a cassone. What we see in this panel is chastity, personified here as Laura. She's set atop a chariot, and in front of her she holds captive Cupid, the god of love. Her chariot is drawn by two unicorns, symbols of purity, and behind her are a group of her sister virtues and other chaste heroines. This panel is remarkable because its details are wholly captivating, the colors are vibrant, and it has also survived in wonderful condition. So this is painted in 1730, so it's quite an early work for Hogarth. It was last on the market in the late 19th century. This is the first time he ever treated a Shakespearean subject in his art. And it's a theme that he would return to in a number of occasions, both directly and indirectly throughout his career. So it's incredibly important. The scene is taken from Shakespeare's Henry IV and is a wonderfully comical, subversive scene of essentially election bribery and manipulation in, in a truly sort of Hogarthian way. Great works of art are often exceptionally beautiful, they inspire strong emotions, but very rarely are they funny. And I think one of the great things about Hogarth is it makes you laugh, it makes you smile, and that's a very rare thing in a work of art. Another highlight is this jewel-like still life of fruit by Louise Moyon, a female pioneer of the still life genre in France in the early 17th century. It was painted in about 1634, and what we see here are apricots, peaches, and plums, all resting in a beautiful porcelain bowl. What is so exciting about this work is Moyon has very truthfully rendered every detail. The coolness of the porcelain bowl, the smoothness of the apricots, and the fuzzy skin of the peaches. The harmonious balance of the color and composition of this painting is a wonderful illustration of why Moyon has been so passionately sought after since her lifetime. The unifying theme really would be quality. The vast majority of things in lovely condition with excellent provenance, fresh to the market, and really great examples of their type. So we look forward to seeing you hopefully in the galleries in December. <laughs>